working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. A contentious city council meeting over the motto, In God We Trust, the proposal to put it on our police cars and speakers ponying up the money and what council members had to say. Still ahead. As the investigations into allegations of sexual misconduct against Monsignor Craig Harrison continue, we are awaiting a statement from the religious leader today and learning more about another priest with local ties who's now being investigated. Today is Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. Just a slight chance of a shower in there. Uh, the clouds will be hanging around and will be warmer. We'll be in the 70s instead of the 60s like we saw yesterday. 45 in Tehachapi right now. You have a westerly wind at 9 and throughout the day. We're going to warm you back up into the 50s and we keep a slight chance of a shower in there as well. Well, should the phrase, in God we trust, appear on Bakersfield police cars? That's the question people debated at last night's city council meeting. 17's Karen Poir was there and has reaction from those both for and against the idea. In April, Delano City Council gave the green light to put in God we trust decals on its police cars. So the question here is, could Bakersfield patrol cars be next? It's on our money, and it's on the wall of the Bakersfield City Council Chambers. But do these four words belong on our police cars? As I stand here today, I see on your back wall the words, In God We Trust. Yet all are welcome here, believers, non-believers. And I also see In God We Trust here in the chamber, and I don't feel welcome here. There were several arguments in agreement with the pastor, including City Councilwoman Jackie Sullivan, who spearheaded the movement to add the motto nationwide. And there are now over 700 cities and counties that are displaying our national motto. It is a sign of patriotism and support of our leadership. If it's a deal breaker, we'll pay for it. Many other local business people also pledged to pay for the decals so that it would not cost the city a dime. However, there were also several arguments of dissent. Not every single one of our police officers is religious. They don't necessarily necessarily believe in a single God. It doesn't matter that these well-intentioned people are telling us that it doesn't purport and push religiosity. It does. It has the potential to disenfranchise and drive out good police officers, the kind of officer that we desperately need in our chronically understaffed local law enforcement. Another topic of discussion, appointing the ninth and final member of the Measure N Committee. Back in February, when the committee was formed, one of the original nine members stepped down. City Council members voted on Connie Perez Andreessen to take his place. She is the board's second Latina. Her selection follows complaints that the current committee doesn't have enough women or people of color. I'm a board member of Latina Leaders of Kern County, and that's what one of our missions is, is to encourage and empower Latina women to step up and, and, and volunteer and apply to be on boards and commissions. Public speakers asked City Council to put the In God We Trust issue onto the next meeting's agenda. Council members did not make a decision whether or not they would do that. I'm Karen Hua, 17 News. The worldwide Catholic Church abuse scandal continues to impact par- uh, parishes here at home. The Diocese of Fresno confirms it's placed another priest accused of inappropriate conduct with minors on leave. Father Raul Diaz is a pastor of St. Catherine Siena in Dinuba. The diocese says it put him on paid administrative leave Friday after someone reported allegations of inappropriate behavior with minors to police. We reached out to the Dinuba Police Department, which confirmed someone filed a report last week. The department also says Diaz hasn't been the subject of any previous criminal investigations. Parishioners at St. Catharines are in disbelief. I don't know who's saying the truth when, it's some, when something is, is an investigation. Uh, anybody could, could come and tell you that you touched me inappropriately. On his Facebook page, Diaz says he was part of the McFarland High School cross-country team in the 1980s. He adds he was coached by Jim White, the man profiled in the 2015 Disney film McFarland USA. White says Diaz was not part of the varsity team portrayed in the movie, but he did run for the JV team during that time. We also want to clarify that Diaz is not related to the Diaz family profiled in the film. Please say the investigation is still in the early stages. 
507 now, and in the wake of a Catholic monk speaking out against Monsignor Craig Harrison, we're expecting a statement from the priest today. Brother Justin Gilligan shared his story with 17's Olivia Lavois. He says Harrison became a mentor when he was studying to become a priest. That's when he says he became a victim of Harrison's, quote, inappropriate touching and sexual advances. He says that he came out publicly because he knew the first accuser to reveal their identity would likely be attacked by Harrison's attorney and supporters. He wanted to be the one to take that on for the other men who've filed police reports and chosen to stay anonymous. A lawyer representing four men accusing Harrison of misconduct when they were minors issued a statement supporting Brother Justin. He says he's appreciative Brother Justin clarified the diocese was investigating allegations against Harrison before his clients came forward. His statement reads in part, quote, The men we represent thank Brother Justin for having the courage it took for him to make this public statement. Our men are heartened by a remarkably conscientious young Catholic cleric. Harrison's lawyer, Kyle Humphrey, responded to Brother Justin's claims. He says he remains certain Harrison is innocent and thinks the allegations are part of a plan to frame Harrison and get money from the diocese. Humphrey also says Harrison plans to issue a statement, the first since he posted on Facebook last month. We're continuing to follow the story for you and plan to have an update tonight on 17 News at 5 and 6. It's 5.09 now, and a Caliente man found guilty of killing his friend during an argument will soon know how long he'll spend behind bars. Last month, jurors found Daniel Rhodes guilty of second-degree murder yesterday. Rhodes shot William Alford last October and admitted to putting his body in a trash can. Court documents say Rhodes claimed Alford forced his way into the home, demanded items of value, and threatened him. Police still haven't found Alford's body. Rhodes faces 40 years to life for the murder. He's due in court for sentencing later this morning. Well, biscuits and gravy served with a side of kindness. That was the daily special for Debbie and Gil Edmondson, the owners of Zingo's Cafe. Two beautiful souls who, as Tabitha Mill shares, are deeply missed. That's right. Good morning, Maddie morning. and Alex. She served him coffee, and that was it. It was the start of a love story that spanned nearly 23 years. Order up. Love is what you get at Zingo's Cafe on Buck Owens Boulevard. No matter what you order, it's the main course. That's the way Debbie and Gil Edmondston wanted it to be. Amazing people. I mean, you could not have found any better people. The, the, these people were so thoughtful, they would do anything for anybody. In 1986, Debbie started as a waitress at Zingo's. Ten years later, she became the owner. She'd also take the order of a man who would become the love of her life. Together, they'd share their love with others, anyone and everyone who needed it. So many people loved my mom and Gil because they never met a stranger. They were always there to help, never asking for anything in return. I, I, I mean, I've been with my sister and just coming out of Walmart and somebody was standing there and she'd say, here, hand them this, and it'd be $20.00. And they'd tell her, bless you, and she said, I'm already blessed. So she was, she was just amazing, and her husband was the same. He was very thoughtful and amazing. Debbie died on May 19th after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. She was 64 years old. Ten days later, Gil died. Doctors attribute the death to complications related to COPD. But family says he died of a broken heart. I would go in and see him, and he would just cry and say, I don't know what I'm going to do without her. I don't think he could handle living without my mom. Imagine a world full of such love. And if you have a hard time doing so, just head down to Zingo's. There, you'll feel the love Debbie and Gil shared. Bye, honey. Love you. Mm -hmm. See you later. Okay. Debbie and Gil would have celebrated their 23rd anniversary on Saturday. Funeral services for Debbie are set to take place today at 2 at City View Church. It's at 3535 Union Avenue, and Zingo's will close at 1 so staff can attend. And services for Gil are set for June 5th at 2 p.m. at the VFW Post in downtown. Hi, I'm Scott with Aspire. I want to personally thank Kern County for trusting Aspire with being a part of your family's recovery. At Aspire Counseling Services, we take this opportunity very seriously and would be honored for your continued support. Call us today. We're back here at 521. NBC's revisiting one of its major annual events tonight, Red Nose Day, a one-night event to raise money to help kids worldwide fighting poverty. Mark Barger has a preview of tonight's big event. It's Red Nose Day! 
NBC celebrates five years of red rubber noses tonight. Be an everyday hero. Five years as the centerpiece of relief efforts to lift kids out of poverty. It helps kids everywhere, not just in America, but all over the world. Welcome back. Terry Crews hosts tonight's fundraiser, which enlists big names. You're backing some incredibly effective programs. And all-star performers to bring in donations. I want all of you at home to be on your phones. Guys, are you ready? Listen There's up. also a special Red Nose edition of Hollywood Game Night. Oh, Kelly Clarkson! Oh! What's wonderful about Red Nose Day is, is how uh, successful they are. $150 million over the last four years. Funds that answer a need Milo Ventimiglia saw close up in Nairobi, Kenya. And at the same time, they scavenge for food stuff. In a dump? Yeah, everything is dumped here. Chemicals from the factory. His visit's one of several vignettes airing tonight. I know I'm changed by being here and seeing it. I hope others are just by seeing the film that we put together. It's a serious message, but driven home amidst serious fun. Every year it's new, every year it's different, and every year we just want to make as much money as we can. With that in mind, Red Nose creator Richard Curtis reunited the cast of his romantic comedy Four Weddings and a Funeral for a mini sequel tonight. I got an email and I answered right away and said, yes, I'd love to do this. Red Nose organizers hope potential donors say the same thing. Mark Barker, NBC News. And you can buy those Red Noses at Walgreens pharmacies and you can also donate to Red Nose Day during tonight's broadcast. It all starts at 8 o'clock right here on TV 17. In your 17 Business Watch, an Israeli company plans to build a massive logistical center that would bring new jobs to Kern County. Supervisor Mike Maggard says Hadco Metal Trading Co. is a $25 million investment to build a 250,000 square foot facility in Kern. These are pictures of what the center will look like. It'll be built on Wings Way, adjacent to Meadows Field. The company plans to hire 25 employees who will operate in two shifts, carrying materials from suppliers and a transfer stations for distribution. Speaking of jobs, JobFest is heading back to Taft this morning. It's all happening from 9 a.m. to noon at the historic Fort on North 10th Street. Job fests are held all over Kern County to get people working and lower the unemployment rate. Applicants are advised to bring at least 50 copies of their resume and be ready for interviews on the spot. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Aspire Counseling Services. Call 829-7300.